everyone. My name is Ellery. I'm the health adventurer. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to any of you guys who uh, are already following the channel. Um, thank you so much for following. Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about um, how foods really, there's no perfect food. Um, as much as I have found benefit myself from eating, you know, basically a high fruit diet, it's definitely not a perfect diet and it's, it's more of a cleanse um, and there's, like I said, there's really, there's really not a perfect food, but there are some foods that are definitely better than others. Um, so for those of you guys who are new to my channel, just to give you a little bit of a background about where I'm coming from and why I'm, you know, trying different foods. Um, you know, I've had a lot of different health problems, um, specifically autoimmune type of health issues. So um, the main thing I have had an issue with is lupus types of symptoms. So um, a couple of months back, um, I had some kind of rock bottom moments with my health where um, I would go out in the sun and, you know, I still, I'm not really sure if I should really be going out in the sun just yet. I don't really feel confident in testing that out just yet. Um, but I got on the sun and I would just be completely wiped out, completely exhausted, and I would feel really, really sick for like a week, just like nerve pain and just fatigue and all kinds of stuff, really bad. Um, you know, so I have that and I've, I've had it show up in my blood work. Um, last year I went to a rheumatologist and she said I had low C3C and low C4C um, levels. No, I'm not a fitness model. Um, so those those are things that can be indications of having lupus. Um, you know, I decided not to go the conventional medical path. Um, I just have had really bad experience with it in the past. Um, I was diagnosed with acid reflux when I was like 13. I was given medication and put on it for like seven years and you're not supposed to be on that medication for like more than eight weeks and it really messed me up and I started linking things together and realizing that I think this medication had caused a lot of other uh, medical problems. So I just didn't want to get stuck in that whole loop. And I wanted to do some of my own research and really understand things for myself because, you know, if you're going to a doctor, you are a consumer and you have to make your own choices. And, and obviously we want to be able to trust that the medical community is looking out for us, but also we have to understand that we're still looking at a profit-based business and it's important to be able to make good decisions that you feel good about. So that's just my take on it. And I know everyone has their own opinions on it and it can be very controversial. So I won't get into that too much. Um, but I just wanna share with you today, um, basically what my experience has been having gone raw vegan and primarily fruitarian, really high fruit diet. And um, what, you know, doing that and going through all these different types of diets and what I've noticed about different foods and how they affect me personally. And um, how's my favorite food? Well, I don't know if I can say I have a particularly favorite food. I like all different kinds of foods. Um, but how those different things have affected me and, and I want to go through kind of like a list of just in my opinion, also based on some, you know, research that I've done as well. Um, like which foods are kind of like the least negatively impacting down to the ones that are like the worst, um, at least again, in my, in my opinion and in my experience, everyone's a little bit different. So, you know, for example, my boyfriend, there are certain things that he will eat that will affect him differently than me and, and vice versa. So it's, it's all a very individualized kind of an experience. Um, so, and that's why this whole thing, it really is an adventure and that's why I call my channel the health adventure. Okay, so just to, uh, also I, I do want to add too, if you guys are frustrated with getting healthy, the, you know, this is the, the reason why. It's like there really is no perfect food. There's so many different things that we do to our foods, putting chemicals and hormones and animals and all kinds of stuff, that it makes it very, very difficult and frustrating to the point where it can just be easy to just give up and just say, forget about it. I don't even really want to try doing this. And, you know, so I totally get it. Um, but for me, I'm in such, I've, I've had such a severe situation um, that it made sense for me and I, I felt really passionate about going this way and trying some things that might seem kind of extreme to some people. So first food on the list for me that is the least uh, negatively impacting, again, for me and my health is definitely, obviously, 
fruit. <laughs> um, fruit for me has been amazing because I have not noticed any negative impacts with my hands. And my hands, um, I actually don't think I mentioned this in this particular video, uh, issue I, the issue I was having with my hands was they were closing up on me involuntarily, um, particularly like at night, like I'd go to sleep, they'd close up on me, I'd wake up in the morning, and it would take a really long time for me to be able to kind of like open them up. And, you know, so it really was negatively impacting my just my life and, and my quality of life. So it was a really, really serious thing. That was like, that was the number one thing that I really needed to uh, address besides the issue with going out in the sun. And, you know, I'd read a lot about juicing and, and, and raw vegan diets and all this kind of stuff. And um, I, I met somebody at a health store, actually someone I knew already and someone my boyfriend knew. And uh, she was like, you should try juicing. So when I kind of heard it from somebody else who I know works at a health food store, she sees a lot of different people, she's she's done it herself, she's had success with it, it kind of convinced me to go ahead and, and, and try it and see if it would work for me. And what I found was that in, within like a week or two, you know, I tried so many different things with my hands, like I tried going just vegan and I, I took out um, I took out grains, I tried like a blend of, I kind of tried like a sort of a paleo thing for a while where I was eating actually a lot of chicken, I would eat like half a chicken a day and I was still eating like a lot of steamed vegetables and stuff and my, my hands just were not getting better. Um, so I, I was kind of in this place where I'm like, okay, I'll just try anything. So I decided to go ahead and just do basically raw foods. Um, so, and fruit really, uh, there are some vegetables that have affected me negatively, um, particularly like bok choy is always the one that comes to mind. Even carrots have affected my hands a little bit too. Um, but fruit does not do that for me. Fruit will, however, it will have a detoxing, uh, detoxifying effect for me, I found. For example, um, like it'll create this kind of bubbling movement throughout my body, or um, I also had like, um, it changed like the color of my tongue, like, a, like some candida seemed to be coming out and then it went away. Um, so these are things that because, you know, they eventually went away, you know, I can just tell that it, it's not, it was nothing to worry about. Although if you don't know what to expect, you could look at it and go, oh shoot, you know, fruit's causing all these problems. But actually, um, it seemed to actually just be pulling a lot of stuff out. And if you ever watch um, Dr. Robert Morse on YouTube, he has a lot of really great information about the lymphatic system. Um, he kind of puts everything all together with that. Some really great technical info. Um, so you can always check out his channel. Um, I've, I've watched his channel a lot and, and learned a lot from there. Um, but the problem with, with fruits, um, just, just eating fruits alone you know, for a very long period of time is you definitely have to be careful with, uh, with the teeth, you know, teeth sensitivity. Um, you know, I do, I do notice that every once in a while. So then sometimes I'll go in and I'll add like avocado. Um, but then, you know, there's problems with, with, uh, avocado for me. So, um, I have these calluses on my hands that sometimes they, well actually they've been there for quite a while now, um, that are related to like scleroderma or again lupus. Uh, so those kind of autoimmune things, right? So when I eat avocado, I notice that like right away it turns bright red. So it seems to be irritating that, but other than that it doesn't seem to be causing anything really negative for me. Um, so. So yeah, so fruit though overall is definitely the best thing for me. I'm just looking at my notes over here. Uh, I'm trying to remember everything to talk about here. Um, oh, I wanted to mention, uh, by the way, I know I've been talking about uh, getting a glucometer just to check and see if it did anything weird to my, my glucose levels. And I found that everything looks pretty, you know, okay to me, looks pretty healthy. Um, I'm just turning this on here. I was gonna do more testing of this, um, but it actually really hurts. Like, I didn't know that it would hurt that bad. It was like bruising my fingers. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but <laughs> all of you diabetics out there, man, like you really put up with a lot of stuff. Okay, um, <laughs> let's see if I can open up the logbook and take a look at uh, some of the readings. Now, I did take a couple of readings like at the same time just to make sure that my meter was accurate. Um, let me take a look at my little book here because I wrote down what the readings were. Okay, so um, so there was one day that I had, let's see, I had a fasting glucose level, 
Okay, so this is, I think it was like 80, so it was 82, okay. And then I had three mangoes. And then um, I, I tested my blood sugar level, I think it was 30 minutes later, just to see um, like right away what happened. It went up to like 170, and then it came back down to, uh, I guess, 94. Or 95 so I, I didn't I didn't completely mark down exactly when all these things were but you can see like 90 here's 91 yeah so I mean everything everything looks pretty normal I mean I I'm really not concerned about like blood sugar or whatever um, a lot of people think that that's gonna be a problem with fruit for some reason but it's actually fruit sugar is fructose it's not it's not glucose so it's it's different um, is processed uh, by your liver. So, yeah. Anyway, so moving on to the next uh, category here. So fruit is, is definitely pretty pretty darn good overall. Um, coconut, I don't know if it's a category, but that, that it's, it's kind of like it's a nut, but it's not like the rest of, you know, like, for example, almonds and cashews and those kinds of nuts. Um, so coconut for me, I haven't noticed um, really any negative side effects, although I do know that coconuts shipped into the United States are typically, um, they're doused with um, like formaldehyde and a bunch of different um, chemicals. So for example, I know like when my boyfriend has coconut, he says he does feel like a little bit funny. So that's, again, that's just like a different sensitivity. Um, so he's a little bit more sensitive to coconut than I am, particularly like coconut water. Um, but I haven't noticed a particular issue with it. So if I find that, you know, my fruit is maybe causing too much sensitivity to my teeth, then I start adding in a little bit of like coconut and coconut water. Um, so I think I already mentioned avocados causing the redness on um, my hands, but I have that listed as third. Okay, raw vegetables. So depending on the vegetable, um, so for example today I actually had a really good raw, um, raw soup. It was um, heirloom tomatoes. Um, and heirloom tomatoes, I think those are kind of the least like commercially negatively affected. Um, so and they, they taste really, really good. So I had some heirloom tomatoes. Um, I think I put some mango in the soup. I put some apple, um, some herbs. So I put some onion some garlic, um, I put some oregano, thyme, basil, all fresh herbs, by the way. And it was really, really good. It, 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 was, it was nice to have it because it kind of reminded me a little bit of eating some cooked food. Um, I, I think it tasted better than like a cooked um, tomato soup or something. So it, it tasted really good. I was really happy with it. I'll probably do like a little recipe on it at some point and throw it up on the Health Adventure website. Uh, my website, actually, the, the link is in the description of my uh, on my Periscope channel if you ever want to check it out. Um, so I plan on putting up a, a blog on there. I already have some pictures, I think, of the... Yeah, I, I did post some pictures on Instagram if you want to see what it looked like. Um, but some raw vegetables, some have a negative impact on... I noticed, at least when starting out with the raw vegan... Uh, diet was that some of them caused some of those issues that I was having with my hands where they would um, maybe 20 minutes after eating bok choy or something like that my hands would start to close up a little bit so I noticed that there were certain vegetables and this is because um, vegetables are actually kind of high in anti-nutrients and actually tomatoes are part of the nightshade family so some people are, are sensitive to nightshade vegetables um, so that's an important thing to know if you're ever um, having issues with certain types of foods and you want to know which ones are causing it. Well, nightshade vegetables can cause some problems for some people. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's the thing with vegetables. Fruits don't really have uh, these kinds of anti-nutrients. Um, I believe if they do, they're very, very small amounts. But uh, vegetables have a lot of anti-nutrients and that uh, anti-nutrients, just to clarify uh, the definition of what that is, so they, they interfere with the absorption of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. They can cause bloating and, and digestion problems. Um, so for some people, raw vegetables can cause some bloating. And that actually happened for me. Uh, the first time I made a raw food soup, it was like with carrot juice, and I had some uh, leafy greens in there. And I think one of those was bok choy. And I had a lot of indigestion, and I felt bloated, and it, it didn't really feel very good. 
Um, so and it, it actually I ended up not being able to sleep very well that night because of it because I eat a little bit close to bedtime, which I probably shouldn't have done, but that's all right. Um, so I learned from that. So, but on the other hand, raw vegetables are still pretty high in nutrients. Um, so I still think that they're better for me at least um, overall than cooked vegetables because with cooked vegetables, I, I tried doing just completely vegan uh, with cooked vegetables and some avocado for a while to try to address the issue with my hands not being able to open up and it wasn't doing anything for me. Um, I didn't feel very energized at all with raw foods. I definitely feel a lot more energized. Um, the raw food soup that I had today, uh, I mean, I haven't slept very much in the last couple of days. I've just had a lot going on, uh, you know. So I, it, it really energized me, actually. I've, even though I haven't had a lot of sleep, the raw food soup that I had just gave me a lot of energy. And I don't know if the cooked vegetables um, would have that same effect. So um, I did put cooked vegetables um, below raw vegetables. Um, for that reason um, and also obviously cooked vegetables they're not going to have as many of the nutrients but they do reduce some of those anti-nutrients that I was talking about earlier with the raw vegetables so it can seem a lot of there's a lot of debate between what's better for you raw vegetables or cooked vegetables but again like I was saying I wasn't able to do anything with my hands until I went completely raw and even including some some raw vegetables like for example uh, zucchini, like raw zucchini, I would do some zucchini pasta or something like that, and um, that didn't seem to have as much of a negative impact. Yes, I am raw vegan, currently uh, pretty much fruitarian. Um, my diet is always subject to change just depending on how I feel it's affecting my body, um, but I've definitely had the most success so far with a raw vegan diet. I've only been this way for a couple of months. An ethical vegan, that's awesome. That's a great reason to be vegan as well. Definitely sustainability for the environment and impact on the animals is another concern too. Um, for me, health is always number one, but I definitely um, appreciate um, being vegan for ethical reasons as well, so that's awesome. Um, okay, so that's where I had uh, cooked vegetables at. After that, I put um, other nuts and seeds. Um, I don't really believe that things like cashews and almonds are really all that natural, to be honest. Um, they're actually inside really toxic shells, um, and they have to be legally um, to be sold to consumers, at least here in the U.S. Um, they have to be steamed or boiled or something like that um, to avoid those that toxic shell um, from being ingested, or any of the residue, I should say, from the oil that's in that toxic shell from being ingested. Um, so I don't actually know if those things are good anyway, but whenever I eat nuts, I break out with cystic acne. So I just avoid nuts like the plague. Um, I was kind of disappointed. I, you know, I used to really love cashews and things like that, um, but anytime I eat pretty much, I think any kind of nut, it just, it doesn't work for me. Um, seeds, I don't really have a very good experience with either. Seeds are generally also not very digestible unless they're kind of broken down, I think, in some way. So I just, you know, I don't think they're like, you know, some people have a, a pretty good experience with nuts, I guess, just incorporating it into the general diet. I don't, so I just keep them out. Um, okay, next on the list we have, uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to mention I tried sprouted almonds and it I didn't change anything, so... <laughs> Um, in case, because now I'm going into another section here with uh, foods that I have not actually technically tried yet. I have not tried, for example, soaked legumes. So I can't necessarily say whether or not I think it's it's really in the spot it needs to be on the, on the list of what's the least impacting foods versus the most negatively impacting foods. Um, but I'm just kind of putting it here as a guess. Um, so soaked legumes, um, so usually from what I understand, soaked beans still pretty much need to be cooked for the most part um, because they do have a lot of, um, I think it's lectins that uh, can really upset your stomach and they're just, it's not, it's not, it's not good. It's actually, it's, I think it's kind of dangerous to eat like raw, um, if they haven't been soaked uh, beans. And legumes so um, this is one of those foods that has to be cooked in order to eat and in my opinion you know just from doing more research it, it just seems like 
if you have to cook it in order to eat it, you know, then it's like, okay, well, how natural is it really? Um, is it the end of the world to eat those foods though? No, I mean, I, I do think it's still um, better than some other foods even to eat cooked uh, legumes. Um, but for me, uh, I had, I tried some, uh, what's it called? Not kidney beans, black beans. I had black beans like uh, maybe a week, two weeks ago or something like that. And after I ate, I had like, I think I had like a whole can of them and I had been doing pretty much raw vegan, for mostly fruitarian for a couple months and I had a little bit of nerve pain after that. So it, it felt like it wasn't a good thing. Okay, so the next thing is sprouted grains. Uh, so sprouted grains are better than, than regular grains because it makes it more digestible and that sort of thing. Um, but then there's still the, the factor of gluten and again, anti-nutrients and that sort of thing. I get acne if I eat like, even if I eat like the Ezekiel, I think I had like Ezekiel tortillas um, and I, I, it gave me acne. It didn't give me cystic acne, um, you know, but it just gave me a little bit of acne. It seemed a little bit irritating. It may have affected my hands as well. I just, it's one of those things I don't really want to take a risk with right now. So that's on the list there. Okay, so after all of the plant foods, so so far plant foods I have um, categorized at the top, fruit, then I've got coconut, avocado, raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, other nuts and seeds, soaked legumes, and sprouted grains. Okay, so after that whole list, um, then I have raw fish. So even though sushi is um, technically, like, it's sold as raw, it is frozen, usually right at sea, actually. Um, so it's actually not really, really raw. Um, but I do think it's probably better than like eating cooked meat, like cooked chicken or something like that. Um, in some ways. On the other hand, obviously we have a huge issue with the pollution and obviously then there's sustainability issues as well with, with fishing and overfishing and that sort of thing. Um, but eating, eating fish, you know, you're going to be getting heavy metals, you're going to be getting mercury and everything else, all this stuff. And all this stuff, honestly, you guys, this is coming from the burning of fossil fuels. So, I mean, think about that. <laughs> it's like, what is in our, our fossil fuels? <laughs> so, yeah, now I may not have the food issues that you have, or you may not have the food issues that I have or whatever. Everyone's different, um, and, I, and I totally understand that. My boyfriend has different issues than I have. So I'm just kind of going through, you know, all the different things, um, you know, that I... And noticing in my personal experience, I understand everyone's going to have a different experience. So, um, and yeah, definitely allergies is something that uh, can be a factor. I'm actually, I'm interested in doing some allergy tests myself, um, maybe even doing some food sensitivity testing just to see what, see what the lab work says. Um, that's always an interesting thing. But of course, it's pretty obvious and easy to see, you know, especially now that I've done this fruit diet, which is, you know, pretty much like this canvas to see how individual foods affect my body because some foods you actually don't even, you don't even notice right away when you, you might notice a day or two later or something. So when it's a really simple diet, it's, it's easy to notice what's doing what to your body. So, okay, so um, raw fish. So yes, mercury is definitely um, you know, that's an issue that can definitely cause some problems. Um, you know, heavy metals can cause actually short circuiting, um, and th that can cause like things like Alzheimer's, like for example, aluminum can do that definitely. Um, so definitely got to watch out for the heavy metals. Don't really want those in your body. Um, then there's the potential for parasites, I guess. I mean, I haven't, you know, I used to work at a couple sushi restaurants. I never personally had any problems or noticed any problems with it. Um, and I, so I ate a lot of sushi. That's also another reason why I want to personally avoid it too, is because I ate so much of it. I'd like to make sure, you know, that, um, uh, what was the question? What causes high blood? I'm not sure what you mean by that high blood. You'll have to specify if, or if you're talking about sugar or pressure or something like that. Um, okay. Um, and then I stuck in here. Um, okay, I started a vegetarian diet five days ago. That's awesome. That's really, really wonderful. I wish you the best of luck with that. I hope it works out for you. Uh, high blood pressure. 
Um, a lot of things can cause high blood pressure. Um, even, I think, stress can cause high blood pressure. Um, beans and rice. Okay, there you go. Rice and beans. Um, my boyfriend does a lot of that. Um, yeah, I don't, I actually don't know a, a whole lot about high blood pressure, particularly because I haven't had any issues with high blood pressure. I'm not a dietitian. I just do a lot of research and I've done a lot of research myself. Um, as I'm trying to overcome some of my own health issues, I'm trying to do it in a natural way. And I'm just sharing my experience and what I'm learning with you guys. And, and you guys can do with that information, whatever, however you wish, you can agree, disagree, whatever. But if you find it helpful, then I'm really happy for you. So that's, that's the whole point of this. I just want to share my experience with you guys. And then I also learn some things from you guys too sometimes, which is cool. Um, okay. So, cause there's a lot of things to sort through and you don't always know. I'm a vegetarian, but I haven't lost weight. Um, with that, yeah, I, if you have, if I don't know, if you're trying to do it for losing weight, if you're still including, you know, basically if you're eating more calories than you're burning, um, I, I would say like oils are probably not great if you're eating a lot of cheese, a lot of processed, um, a lot of processed foods. You're probably gonna have trouble with that. Um, okay, and then I've got so I've got vegan alternatives below raw fish. Um, I always find that I break out if I eat like vegan cheeses or tofus or meat substitutes, things like that. Um, oils, which I was just mentioning, oils are very processed. Dairy and eggs. Okay, so dairy, um, dairy tends to be mucus forming. Um, raw dairy is probably, you know, if you can find it. Raw organic dairy is, you know, obviously organic everything is going to be better overall, but that's not going to be um, you know, pasteurized. I never claim to be qualified. I'm not giving, I'm certainly not giving any medical advice or anything to anybody. Again, I'm just sharing my information and my research. Um, like I said, we're all consumers and we have to, um, we're, we're responsible for sorting through what's presented to us and deciding, um, you know, if we agree or disagree with what's being presented to us. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just, again, just sharing my perspective. Um, yeah, so dairy can be mucus forming. Um, and I always get acne with dairy as well. I want to gain muscle on a vegetarian diet. Um, you know, I actually ate a lot of, this is interesting. I used to do high protein. Um, I used to do a lot of training with high protein. Um, and you know, I found actually that when I switched over to a uh, vegan diet and I was eating a lot of steamed vegetables, that I had more muscle definition than when I was training. I actually wasn't even training at the time. I, I kind of took a break from it. I was just doing just the vegan thing and a lot of steamed vegetables seem to help me get more muscle definition. So I don't know if that might help you. Um, you know, that's something you could always experiment with and see if it helps you or not. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so acne with, with dairy and eggs. Yeah, I don't know, eggs, and yeah, just not a big fan of eggs, I guess. So. Um, other animals I have kind of at the bottom, chicken, pork, beef. Um, so the way I feel about, about eating chicken and pork and beef is first of all, like the way when, when you receive it, it's been dead for a while. It's just kind of a gross thing to think about. Like it shouldn't be normal. Um, fish oil, you know, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really against fish oil or anything. I mean, I. I don't. I try to stay away from processed foods. I don't know if there's. I don't know enough about fish oil. I guess to really make too much of a comment on it. Um, yeah. So, uh, but chicken and pork and beef and all that stuff. So if 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 it's been killed, it, like it's basically, to me, I don't. Know, it's kind of been rotting for a while. Um, so. And then you have to, so then you have to cook it and cooking it has another negative impact on it. It kills a bunch of stuff in it. And I don't know, it tends to be harder to digest. You have a longer chain of, of amino acids cause you've got like, you have to break down the protein. Um, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned on this channel. I, okay. So I, there was one time I threw up bananas because I was, I don't know. I think they were like a little bit unripe and I think my stomach didn't like it. But when I threw them up, my, my throw up wasn't, it wasn't acidic. It didn't like, it didn't have like a burning sensation. So to, that's just fruit being very alkalizing. It's not, it's not real acidic. 
if you throw up like chicken or meat or something like that, it usually burns. So to me, that's kind of like an indication of like, okay, like, yeah, your stomach's got to produce like all this acid and to break it down. It just, it seems like it just, it ha your system has to work harder to break down um, protein like that. So, and I get acne and I get redness in my face when I eat meat. So I've just been avoiding it um, altogether. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, my whole list there. And then obviously then, you know, if you want to go into the whole thing with sodas and candies and chocolate and like all this stuff is obviously not really good for you. So I just, I don't even really include that on this list. Um, so that, that's just my experience with, uh, with how my body responds to foods. Um, I've heard of so many different people that have had really, really great benefits from trying raw foods. I've definitely had amazing uh, benefits with, uh, with raw foods. I was watching a video earlier today about somebody who uh, had ulcerative colitis and they no longer have ulcerative colitis uh, now that they've been eating raw foods. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, there's lots of different stories out there like that. Um, if you're interested in checking out other channels and learning more, um, Fully Raw Christina, she's, uh, she had uh, type 2 diabetes and she reversed that. Um, there was, oh gosh, uh, OK Raw, um, John Kohler from OK Raw, um, he had some sort of autoimmune problem that he, I think some skin issue or something that he reversed. So there's a lot of different um, really great stories and I know then there's some people that they say that, you know, they've gone paleo and they've reversed things. So I, you know, I understand that some people have different experiences with different things, but for me, um, meat's just, you know, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, I, it's really, it's, it's so cool to see all these different people sharing their experience, and that's part of the reason why I'm sharing my experience with you guys, because I've benefited a lot um, from, you know, watching all these people share their experience with me, because I learned something from every single one of those people. And um, it's really hard to put together everything sometimes, and, you know, I just... I just want to share my experience with you, and if you benefit from it at all, then that's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, and thank you guys always, too, for the support. You know, I appreciate sometimes, like I said, I learn from you guys as well. That's what I like about Periscope. We got this kind of, like, two-way communication. Um, I'm not just a person, you know, on the screen just talking at nobody. I get to interact with you guys, which is cool. Um, I think that's about it. Um, so just to go over that list again, uh, just briefly. So I've got fruit at the top, coconut, avocados, raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, other nuts and seeds, um, soaked legumes, sprouted grains, raw fish, um, vegan alternatives like cheeses and things, oils, dairy and eggs, um, other animals like chicken, pork, and beef. That's pretty much my list that I have there. So, and you know, maybe as I try, like I haven't really tried sprouted grains or sprouted legumes, maybe if I do try those things, maybe those will move up or down. Um, but that's just what I have so far. Everything else is pretty much based on my own personal experience and some of my research as well. Um, so, you know, basically after, you know, just going through that and, and having gone through, you know, I've only done a couple of months of, uh, thank you so much for all the hearts. Um, a couple of months of being raw, but you know, given the experience that I've had, especially like I was saying with my hands and how you know I went from having them being really closed up and they, like they wouldn't work properly, to now they're working <laughs> like they should in just like two weeks or one week or something, it completely changed. You know, that's that's pretty telling to me what raw foods, you know, what they can do is really really amazing. Um, but, you know, a lot of people have uh, trouble switching over to like a raw foods diet. Um, raw, uh, Fully Raw Christina, she has a lot of recipes. She does include a lot of nuts and seeds in her recipes. So for me, that was a little bit tough. But if you're just getting started, you know, maybe that's something that can work for you. It just depends on how you react to it. Um, and then, you know, just trying to incorporate more things like smoothies and things like that. Like that's something that can help. But just generally going towards more of a whole foods, plant-based diet. Um, if you ever watch Forks Over Knives, that's a really, really great documentary that has a lot of really good info about uh, a whole foods, plant-based diet and why it's really, really beneficial. Um, you know, with me, one thing that I actually didn't really mention was that uh, generally um, populations that eat uh, higher amounts of meat have higher incidences of cancer. Um, so that's a really interesting uh, thing to, to note. And 
Forks Over Knives, sorry. <laughs> Forks Over Knives is the, the um, documentary that I learned that from. So that was a really, really good one. Um, they did a really broad study for that. I think they had like 6,500 participants. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, generally, you know, less meat is seems to be better. Um, so, you know, obviously, and another thing I also want to talk about as well, just briefly, is that food is obviously not the only aspect of health. There's relationships. And then there's, you know, there's other things that, you know, we can't control as easily. Like, for example, the pollution in the air. You know, I live in L.A., so I'm faced with a lot of pollution and gasoline causes like 75% of cancer according to the EPA. So that's really, really bad. Um, so definitely like going raw and everything like might be really great, but it's not like going to necessarily fix everything, everything. Um, but it's a great for me. I found it that it's a really great step to take and it's helped me tremendously so far. Um, so yeah, but it, but you know, if you're frustrated, um, I want to try. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like good, like other resources. So yeah, R R Fully Raw Christina, she's got some great recipes to get you started with. Um, I definitely want to post, I did a really tasty raw heirloom tomato soup today and it was so good. I like, I thought it was better than like regular tomato soup, like that's cooked. So I want to do, I want to post up my recipe that I did on my website, thehealthadventure.com. Uh, which is the link is on my uh, description on my periscope so if you want to keep an eye out for that um, hopefully within the next couple of days i'll get that recipe posted um, it was really good i I'm, I'm like i want to make that every day <laughs> okay maybe not every day but every other day it's really good um yeah so that's a good place to start and like i was saying smoothies I, I smoothies are really good just get a little nutribullet um nutribullets are like a hundred dollars or less i think now so you just get one of those, blend it up. Yes, tomatoes are great. Um, even just, you know, eating some, you know, just getting more fruits and just getting some bananas, just eating. I mean, I eat personally, like I eat a lot of fruit just by itself. Like, like mono meals is what people call it. You know, we just, you just eat one thing. You just get mangoes and you just eat like a couple of mangoes and that's a meal or, or a lot of mangoes depending on how hungry you are um, or a lot of bananas. And one way I try to save money is I try to make it down, like in LA, we've got uh, LA Wholesale Market, which is, they, they distribute their fruit to, um, fruits and vegetables and produce to the uh, grocery stores. So their prices are really, really cheap, but you have to buy by the case. But if you're eating a lot, a lot of fruit the way I am, it makes sense to go, try to go to these places because you can get like, and my boyfriend and I share this too, so we'll get like 40 pounds of bananas and that'll last us like a week. Um, it's a lot of bananas, but we'll get it for like maybe, you know, depending on where we get it from, you know, we always go organic, um, but it can be anywhere between like $12 and $22, which is really not bad at all. Um, so those are just a couple of little tips. Um, I actually do have a YouTube channel. I don't have any videos uploaded onto YouTube yet, but I've got some playlists of different things that I found helpful um, in starting like a raw foods diet. Um, so, you know, that's something I'm gonna be working on too is getting um, that up and running for everybody. But I've got some playlists right now. I don't know if you're gonna have an easy time trying to find my YouTube channel at the moment, but I think what I'll do is um, maybe if I don't get those videos uploaded yet where I'm really pushing my YouTube channel, just to post those playlists on my website on thehealthadventure.com under like some sort of resources thing so that makes it easier for you guys if you're interested in trying something like a raw foods diet and seeing how that works for you um so yeah just but off the top of my head um yeah fully raw christina is really great um for recipes um okay raw he's also good he's got some good information um if you want to look up and learn a little bit about like technical information dr robert morse is a good um if you look him up dr robert morse uh, on YouTube, he's got some good information as well. And I, I think if you want, if you're interested in the technical stuff, but you're not, you don't want to go like too deep. Um, Mark's James, Mark's, I always say Mark's, Mark James Gordon. If you look him up on YouTube, he kind of simplifies a little bit what Dr. Robert Morse talks about. Um, so he just kind of goes over basically like what to expect when you start eating more raw foods because there is like a little bit of a de detoxification that happens. I, I was not expecting that myself when I 
went raw, I thought it was just going to make everything better. And, you know, like, okay, I don't know why. I just thought, hey, I'm, like, I'm not going to experience anything, you know, headaches or anything like this. But I did experience some of that, and I still experience some of that sometimes. It's kind of on and off. But it is less than what it used to be when I first started. So, you know, definitely if anything is too intense, if you feel too many detox symptoms coming up at once, you can always slow it down, eat what some of what you used to eat. You know, you could eat some avocado or some coconut or something a little bit more fatty that maybe won't cause as many of those detox symptoms because fruit, um, fruit has a lot of like pulling astringent properties. Um, it's electrically charged, so it pulls stuff out of you. It has antioxidants, so it's it's taking taking oxidation and all, all this like bad stuff out of your body. So it, it goes through a process. Um, your body goes through a process. It can be a lot you know, to handle, but if you're, like for me, like I was saying, like I had a really difficult health situation where going all out really made a lot of sense, and, and it just depends, like some people do better going gradually, um, you know, some people just, you know, they maybe never go fully raw, they just eat a lot of raw foods with some cooked foods because they just, they don't really have a reason to, uh, they don't have a severe enough reason to really go fully raw, it just make, maybe it's a little more convenient or something for them to eat some cooked foods sometimes. Um, so again, it just different things work for different people and uh, this is just what I've been doing and what's working for me. Everyone's different. Um, you know, you kind of just have to see what works for you. So um, but that's pretty much my video for the evening. Um, I've really enjoyed um, talking to you guys and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm glad, you know, one of these viewers here. I've, um, inspired to go raw, so that's really cool. And um, yeah, I keep me posted on on how it goes for you, and and you know, we'll we'll keep talking about things because like we all learn from each other. I think that's the best way to learn is just to keep talking to each other and learning from each other that way. So yeah, so thank you so much for joining. Um, again, my name is Ellery. I'm the health adventurer, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.